just for a second. Because I want to tell you the picture that the devil was trying to paint the church to take. That devil come up beside you and whispers and look around. You'll be next. So I'm going to completely take over and I'm going to crush the church of the Most High God. You know I know what he says because he said it all through the biblical times. When that God when that giant named Goliath stood up and said, I'm going to crush your army. Yeah. I'm going to crush your God. Who will come fight for me? And all the big strong soldiers and the king himself retreated into their tents. But there was one, uh, just a young, uh, some called him a little scrawny fella. Uh, wow. Hey, but he said, I'll fight you wow. because I'm not fighting my own strength. Uh, I'm not speaking in my own accord. Uh, but I am a, a, a massacre of the most yeah. high God. Uh, and can I tell the body of Christ uh, wow. that we are an ambassador of the most high God? Hey, no. So you need to tell the devil to get under your feet. Uh, and somebody in the shout, it ain't that makes up the DNA of the church. The DNA of the church should be lights set upon a hill, not hid yes. under a vehicle. No. The DNA of the church should be the goodwill, not the misfortune. As long as we'll continually testify of His goodness, we can learn to get ourselves out of the way and just seem high and lift it up. Glory to God. I want to speak a word hopefully into your spirit this morning. I want to give you some encouragement to face the, the challenges that's on this earth right now. I want to talk a little bit this morning about fear. In Galatians chapter number 2, verse number 11. And we want to come at this thing in a little bit different way this morning. You know, I want to tell you, there's some fearful events that's happening on, in this country, around the world. Yes, sir. I, I, can't, I can't imagine when there's a 50 mile an hour gust of wind blowing a firestorm in right in your direction and you just back up and watch your whole property and house go up in a flame and then within seconds it's over with. Everything that you work for is all gone. 
We don't, we don't, we live, we live close enough to the Gulf that we get the repercussions of, of hurricanes, but we don't get the full force of them. Tornadoes, we do. But there are so much things. Uh, in Washington, D.C. this morning, the city is under siege. There's fear in the streets of Washington, D.C. because this is the 17th year or the year that the locust has come out of the ground. Has anybody heard this one? The locust is, you know, every 17 years they, they reproduce, they come out of the ground all in masses. That's when you get your big, your big explosions of locusts eating crops and stuff like that. Well, they're coming out of the ground in Washington, D.C. And what they're producing or what's attached to them is a little bitty parasite that's, they call it the invisible bug that is so small you can barely see it with your naked eye. But what it does, it bites you. It attaches to you and bites you. It causes profuse uh, scratching, irritation, leaving permanent scars and stuff. The city's in a, in a, the city's in a, in a full-blown fear factor. I said, I don't know how the citizens of Washington, D.C. could be any scared of what's happening in the White House. But but I'm telling you a little a little unseen parasite yes, yeah, has got the city in arms. In fact, they showed a video of the of the, the president getting off of the plane or fixing to get in one, and one of the locusts flew into his neck. And he's you know now I'm not advocating that when I walk into a spider web I don't do a little dance. You know, <laughs> come on. But these little parasites again they're 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 biting and they're causing all these problems and. and and, and scratching and itching and, and it's just another thing, amen, that, that you folks find themselves now afraid of. Yeah. Right. Friend, the thing that you and I, and the only thing you and I should be afraid of today is not making heaven. Right. Glory yeah. to God. That we but we're we're his friend. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you feel the sweet presence in this house? We're yeah. we're the property of the Lord. And and, and I want to look uh I, I want to look at, at, at some, some factors here that maybe by just reading these things, we didn't quite sum it up like this. You've heard me testify. when and we, Before we read, I want you to look at me one time. Uh, you remember when Paul walked into the lunch kitchen and, and there was Peter over there with the Gentiles. And when Peter saw Paul, he jumped up and went over there and joined himself to the Jews. And Paul rebuked him to his face. You've heard me testify that. Well, let's read the account of it in, Gen in uh, Galatians chapter Number 2, verse number 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, this is Paul writing, I withstood him to his face, to the face. Let me stop right there and inject, I believe, an, an opportunity for, for an off the call right here. Is let me tell you, if you've got something to say about somebody, go to them and say it to their face. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'll address a little bit more of that after a while. If the church is ever to fall, she falls from the inside, not the out. Yes, sir. So Paul said, I just went straight to Peter. Now remember who this Peter. This is Acts chapter 2, Peter, remember now, full of the Holy Ghost and preached one message and 3,000 got saved. This is, this is Peter, full of the Holy Ghost. But he says, I would stood him to his face because he was to be, help me somebody, right. blamed. For before that certain came from James, our language is before we got there, because James is a part of the, the Jewish church or the church of Jerusalem, he did, Peter did eat with the Gentiles. And it's, that is wonderful. He's testifying to the Gentiles. But when they were come, the church of Jerusalem walked in, Peter withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews that was with Peter disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation means hypocrisy. Think about that. Even Barnabas followed suit and left the company of the Gentiles when he saw the Jewish church. And the word dissimulation is simply means hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, verse 14, Paul said to him, I said unto Peter before them all, 
He didn't stutter and he didn't whisper. If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the, the Jews, why compel thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews? We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I thought, for 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 I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. And then with this is when we always quote this next scripture. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, God. All that you're doing, all that you're going to continue to do. Help us now. Speak to our hearts. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. amen. Now, chapter 3, verse 1, I'm not going to, you don't have to turn, but listen. It's very, very likely that the, the, the account of chapter 3, verse 1 is just an attachment to what he's been telling Peter. When he says, oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? And he's talking to the whole church there, amen, that, that Paul come in and preach salvation through Christ and no other. And But when the Judaizers come in, they try, they were trying to convert them back to the law. But all that, I'll said all that to say this thing right here, that back in, uh, see, for, for before the serpent came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. And he separated, he withdrew and separated himself. And this word, fearing, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Now the word dissembled here and dissimulation are very similar in meaning. It's simply under false part or hypocrisy. Now. Let me, let, me, let, let me help us this morning, if we can, by the help of the Spirit of the Lord. Because we, we think of fear, it, we, it automatically comes in our mind, who have I been around with the virus? Uh, uh, I had to go get blood work, or you had to go get an x-ray or this, and the devil works on your mind and, and gets you. Ain't it amazing if you go and get a, you feel an ache or a pain, you know, and you feel something, and all of a sudden, it seems like the next day, you heard of somebody just dying with cancer because they were eating up in the same spot that you was hurting. And that thing begins to, es to escalate and, 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 and evolve. And you see, when you and I got to fall down and go to sleep or we get weary and tired, the devil don't need to sleep. He's always 24-7 gnawing our minds. Uh, it ain't going to work out. It, 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 it's hopeless. Uh, we all going to die. All these things, that's a fear factor. Glory to God. Uh, and I told the Sunday school class, I'll say this again, uh, that Paul told young Timothy, a young preacher, a young minister, full of faith in the Holy Ghost, uh, but he has ran into some things now, some obstructions and obstacles uh, that the devil's placed in front of him that's caused him to, 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 to step back for a minute. In it. Uh, he, listen, uh, but so Paul said, God don't give you the spirit of fear, uh, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Uh, and I said all that to say this, if you're governed by fear here this morning, you have no possibility of having the soundness mind of Jesus Christ. But if you keep the sound mind of Jesus Christ with the devil, when the enemy comes in as a flood, yeah. the Spirit of God lifts up a standard. Yeah. Come on. Now let me clear the air because I don't want you I don't want to be misunderstood this morning. 
You wearing a mask here does not deviate anything about your faith. So let's get that. Let's check that box, okay? I, I wear them. I just can't preach in one. But I'm not opposed of you coming in here by no stretch of the imagination because you got, Sister T got her mask on. Even we need to stay safe. Come on, yeah, church. Right. Yeah. We need to stay safe. Lord. So if you feel like you want to, don't you apologize to nobody. Come on. Yeah. I, I want to tell you, we all about trying to stay safe yeah. because we all got families we want to go home to yeah. and all the things. But I know how that devil, I know how that spirit lies to God's people. Look at him. He's looking at you like you ain't got no faith. Come on. Well, I don't know. It wasn't what I look at. You might have had a spider crawling right around your forehead. That might be why. Come on now. I want to tell you, friend, but we all that devil knows how to play us against each other. I hear reports daily, daily, daily. And you see here, and here's the sum of the matter now. Peter's doing a good work. He's Winston who's witnessing to this Gentile group here. He's telling them about the Lord. He's, he's telling them about his personal testimony. How, man, I, I, I failed the Lord before, but man, my God, he's a good God. He, he forgave me. So he's preaching a message of forgiveness. I don't know. We don't say it like that. But he's all that just doing more than eating spaghetti with them. Because yes, he's a minister of the gospel. Come on. He's looking for any avenue to get in, to get his foot in the door, that he can witness the salvational grace of Jesus Christ. The hope and glory. Yes, sir. And all of a sudden, he might have had his back to the door. But then folks took their eyes off of him and raised up and said, who, who is this? And he turned around, my God, oh, it's the Apostle Paul. It's the Jewish council. It's the Jewish council from Jerusalem, James. Uh, he's from, oh my God. Uh, and here I am over here, uh, uh, here over here hanging out with the Gentiles. Uh, and he caught up and he went over there to meet them and greet them. Uh, man, I want to tell you, I'd have given anything to be a fly on the wall that day uh, to watch that old man of God deal with Peter. Come on, somebody. Uh, but uh, can I tell you this? I'm not throwing Peter under the bus uh, because at one time or another, uh, if not careful, we do the same very thing. Yes, sir. On our jobs, we're telling this one about the Lord and this, and then all of a sudden, a religious person from another denomination, uh -huh. Uh -huh. from another faith, yeah. and if not careful, if not careful, we, we change our message in mid stride. That's why you got to know what the Word of God says. You can't, you can't just quote what the preacher says and make it. you got to know for yourself what the Word of God says. Uh, and listen, uh, uh, think about it. Who among us this morning would turn and blame the needle for probing in a sore spot to remove an object that's causing the pain? It ain't the needle spot that and now all of a sudden you're digging a thorn out of your finger. It's hurting you. You don't get mad at the needle. The, the needle's a part of your healing process. Yes. Right. Just like the Holy Ghost is a process of, of growing us from one step to the next step, from A to B, amen, huh? that we learn. Huh? We learn, amen, that we represent Jesus Christ everywhere we at. Huh? Like I said a while ago, but I got the compliment. Huh? It's nothing I even said. It's nothing good in us, my friend, but Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Huh? And people begin to gather and just kind of listen now. Hey, they're not listening. I think I'm not E.F. Hutton. Huh? But when the Lord's man or the Lord's woman speaks, huh? people will listen. Yes, sir. People will listen. Yeah. But we got to be steadfast and consistent. Me and that brother sitting right back there I want to tell you, I love each and every one of us. We, uh, the men, I'm a man's pastor. No offense to the ladies. I love you, sisters, and we, the church, I, I appreciate you. But God, I just got a special place with men. Glory. Now, you say that to the wrong crowd, they're going to think you're flaky. <laughs> <laughs> and they say you got sugar in your tank or something. But I'm going to tell you, I, I just love the men because when a man gets. <laughs> Yeah. Elder, you testify to this. When the men get solid in the house of God, the church, oh my God, when the men takes their rightful place with the Lord, because for years and it's so long, it's always the sisters that's got to pull the plow. It's the sisters that's got to pray us through. It's the sisters that's got to make this thing happen. But let the men become the men of God. Amen. And we begin to give the relief to the, to the elders and the sisters. And now we two walk together as one as God is our witness yes, we got to learn to be consistent Amen. somebody let me tell you how this thing works somebody jacking their jaws about this church out there 
I've told them a million times, come see me. Come, come on, somebody. But well, what's happening, you got to understand the spirit that's behind that. Oh, yeah, run out there and going to try to testify uh, something negative against this body of Christ or this pastor or, the, or this community right here. Let me tell you, they'll jack their jaws to you. What do you don't you understand? It's more than gossip. It's demonic. Yeah. Right. It's demonic to be caught up in that because you're sowing the seed of discord yeah. when you give ear to that. Proverbs says six things God hates. Yea, the seventh is an abomination unto the Lord. And the seventh, the abomination is this. Those that sow discord among the brethren. Yes, sir. And God's given us backbones to say, wait a minute. Yes. Yeah, right. Wait a minute. You got something to say, you go say it to the one you're talking about. Hello. Yeah, that's right. Because I learned a long time ago, you're going to tell it, you better tell it all. Come on. Yeah. Are you still out there? This is basically what Paul is doing to Peter, which stood him to his face in front of the whole congregation. He didn't pull him in a back room. He didn't take him to the pastor's office. He would stood him to his face because he knew this thing was a poison and others around him. Paul lets it slide. It won't be long. There'll be so much hypocrisy that nobody will know the truity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Think about it. It is when the flesh is struck that thoughts or decisions of leave is alone. And leave, leave it there. Just leave that sticker. Leave that thorn there. I know it hurts, but I'll use the rest of my fingers. Uh, when, it, when, it, when the flesh is struck, uh, leave it alone. I can't take it. I can't take the pain. Uh, oh, this is going to have to never forget. The same needle that pricked and probed uh, can also be used to sew up something that is torn too. Uh, and my God, friend, I'm here to tell you that with, through the power of God, uh, how many believes when the Lord said nothing is impossible with God? That's more than just seeing a person saved or a demon cast out. It becomes a relationship. Yes, sir. Peter and Paul is having a man-to-man on man conversation, and Paul's got the floor. So you know what Peter's doing? He's listening. He's not objecting. He's not making excuses. He's not backpedaling. And I'm going to prove this in just a little while. He's simply taking it. You know why? Because he's guilty. Yeah, that's right. He's guilty. Listen. As many times Peter has been right, so many times Peter's right, this time he's wrong. Listen, this time he's wrong. And think about it. It's one thing for us to defend the doctrine in the church. It's altogether different to put it into practice in everyday life. Yes, sir. Amen. I pointed at that man back there because just going to use him as an example, he, he ain't got no problem. No problem speaking his, his, his peace. Yeah. And I believe that's, that's a, a trait of the man. We need to learn. Amen. I would hold your tongue right. But when the liberty is there, take your, take, your, take your opportunity to go through that door and witness and testify unto the Lord. Glory to God. But listen, but when somebody asks you a question that you know that the answer is not what they want to hear, we get, we get threatened sometimes uh, to back down and try to stutter. Uh, come on. Uh, man, I, I, I like that old senator from Louisiana, Mr. Kennedy. Come on. Wouldn't give you a nickel for Mr. Cassidy's ethics about, uh, about, about uh, politics. But Mr. Kennedy, come on, somebody. I watched him school a lawyer from Washington the other day. And he used, against that lawyer, he used the lawyer's own quotes. Huh? So he said, are you trying to say we're racist? Are you trying to say this and that? And I'm telling you, I believe he stuttered as much as Moses did at one time. Huh? But glory to God. Mr. Kennedy said, well, we ain't got time. Let's move on. What he simply said, I proved your point and you were found wanted here. So you need to tighten the belt up. Huh? Close your mouth. Come on. And speak words of life instead of words of death. Yeah. See, where's all this going? It's about fear. Yeah. It's about fear. Jehovah Witness comes. <laughs> when they walk in there, so we have Bibles. So what are you doing? Well, I'm going to come in. We're going to show you. I said, no, sir, I don't, I don't, I don't say that. I don't need that. Now, if you want to come in, I'll show you. <laughs> but they don't want to learn. That's right. Come on. And Mormons, say they, they got cars. Now. They used to have bicycles. Yeah. <laughs> Some, you can see them on a backpack. They ride, they ride 10, 12 miles a day, huh? I didn't keep them out. Now, the, the Jehovah Witness, I didn't wish them Godspeed. That's biblical. But the Mormon, 
Come on in. You you pedal on a bicycle 10 miles a day, I'm gonna give them some water. Come on. <laughs> but while I had them in there sipping on their water, at, with their mouth full of water, my mouth was open with the gospel. Come on, brother. Yeah, come on, somebody. But you don't change this because of uh, oh, somebody asks you, listen, especially in a crowd, when somebody asks you a personal question about this or about that, and there's a crowd there. Well, hey, don't get mad at me for the answer. Get mad at the one that asked me the question. Yeah, yeah right. Come on. Yeah. Right. You see what I'm saying? But we get fearful sometimes. We get fearful of, 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 of letting this lost generation out there see the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God that that thank God that Paul recognized this and saw it and he had to he dealt with that then that we would deal with things now. Yes, sir. Can I say it more plainly? Don't believe everything you hear from somebody out there. That's right. That's right. Because guess yeah. what? They always gonna they, they always gonna play themselves as the victim. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And nine point nine nine percent are they that prone? I used to all uh, prone to to make sure you know they spend all their time trying to vindicate themselves. Jesus was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and he opened not his mouth. Come yeah. On. Come on. If you've got to spend all your time trying to keep your reputation spotless, give it a rest. As long as God be for you, who can be against you? Come on. Yeah, yeah. I want to tell you, babe, I ran behind people and tried to, uh, tried to smooth everything over and, and tried to, to, to verify that I'm really innocent and not guilty and just leave it alone. God will fight our battles. Yeah. Come on. Huh? I said, listen, huh? Moses said at the Red Sea, God, they're murmuring and complaining. Huh? They're accusing me, Lord, huh? of bringing them out here just to be slaughtered by the Egyptians. Huh? And God never even said anything about that, but he asked me this, what you got in your hand. What you got in your hand. He said, lift it over that sea and I'll perform a miracle. And every time Moses got in the vine, when he referred back to God or waited on the instruction of God, God brought him through. Yes. Are you still out there? Yes. One time, he got agitated and aggravated in himself with that same rod that one time he stretched over the Red Sea, he smote a rock with it. And when he did, it cost him, it cost him his promised land. Oh yeah, Moses is in heaven, but he didn't he didn't get to go over there and see the promised land. Let me let me move on with, with, with this. Now listen, there's one thing. I said this a minute ago to defend the doctrine in the church. It's altogether different to put it into practice every day. And this is what I really want you to key up on. Peter's freedom was threatened by Peter's fear. Peter's freedom was threatened by Peter's fear. After his experience with Cornelius, talking about Peter, Peter had been called on the carpet and, and now has seems like to defend himself. But he's, what's he going to do here? Would it be, do you ever evaluate this? Do you, would it have been so hard just to recognize, hey, brother, dismiss yourself or excuse yourself from, from just one second, let me go over and speak to the brother. But he did. He forgot. He forgot. He completely did not even acknowledge him. And he went over there and tried to kiss up out of fear. Out of fear. Come on. You know, I, I walked into conversations before, and the conversation stops when I get there. You've been there. You've been there before, right? The first thing you, we assume, an assumption as well, that the conversation must have been either really, really private, that wasn't my affair, or it was talking about me. Well, you know what the devil always going to say? Well, you should, you should yeah. come on. And if we're not careful, we swallow it hook, line, and sinker. But let me tell you, it's like this with this. If I'm talking to somebody in a private conversation and somebody comes up, and it's nothing about, per se, the person that's coming up. It's just private here. And I don't want to let it go out of the circle right here. Because you, the, one of the big things that you did, help me, Elder, the, one of the big things we got to do as ministers in the church is we got to keep sometimes the circle real, real small with our personal information. Right there. Because there's some that it'll be on Facebook before you get your car cooled off today. Come on. Come on. Some of you looking at me crazy. Out here. Well, I don't have Facebook either, but I guarantee you it'll be on there. Somebody will have it. Come on. Somebody, somebody will post it. Glory to God. It's amazing. It, it, it's amazing how so many people gets, gets pulled aside and blowed off course by fear. 
Glory to God. You can't make a sound decision if your mind's so full of fear. And Peter here, Peter feared. He feared that the, he feared that this this uh this group of people, people that he called brothers and sisters. Look. So we see that now Peter had not been afraid to obey the Spirit when he was sent to Cornelius. But now, with the arrival of some members of the circumcised and opposition. Peter lost his courage. Ooh. You know how we get, especially when he's doing them Pentecost holiness folks, you know, that they're the only ones going to heaven. And ain't many of them making it, huh? Right. They get in your meet brother Daniel, Daniel, my son-in-law, he tells me up there, it's 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 the holiness people that, that grills them. It just grills them. But yet it's the holiness movement that there's more homosexuality and adultery that's sweeping through those religions. It's amazing, though, in, in times when we're talking and all of a sudden around the funeral home, then all of a sudden, uh, uh, let me tell you, like it or not, believe it or not, me and T can go to, Sister T can go to town and we can go somewhere and if she looks the part, there's certain people will come and acknowledge her. Mm, hey, sister, how you doing? Now, come on, somebody. Yeah. Glory to God. I told you what I did the other day with a, with a family that was obvious that's what they were. And, hey, I'm modest, so I'm not throwing no stone at nobody. But I opened the door, and, I, and I'm, I'm being polite, and she just looked at me. Oh, I had jeans and a short sleeve shirt on. Oh, cap. Glory to God. He ain't no man of God. Sometimes we're a man of God if we got a big beard. Sometimes we're a devil if we got a come on. Uh, sometimes we can wear a tie. Sometimes we can't. Uh, sometimes we can't wear one other white. It better be. It better look like bugs in Malone. They better be hanging down there about touching your fingers. Uh, and sometimes, come on, somebody, and it's up and down, in and out. That's the best religion can do. Yeah. Yeah. Paul said, Peter, you ain't saved by works, son. Listen, when Paul would stood him to his face, I guarantee you, he ain't just pat his hand. Right. I'd have hated to sit under Paul's ministry. <laughs> Woo, you think you would have got whooped and, and, and the high tore off of you. He even said one time he wrote him a letter. He said, just a good thing I can't get over there right now. So I'm sending you this letter. But then he said something like this, but I am coming. <laughs> Come on. Come on. He loved, but he loved, he loved people. Yeah. See, we get, we get tagged as hard preaching insensitive, not concerned, they don't have no feelings, they do all that, they try to control, they want all, they want all the money. If I wanted money, I'd still have my logging business. If I wanted my logging, if I wanted money, I'd still be in turnarounds or something like that. Money don't involve me. But watch this. God involves money in my life and through our hands that we can that we can furnish fresh water to foreign countries. Come on, somebody. So like it or not, the money takes care of the light bill. It's it, it, it's a it's a crime shame. At a church in Jonesboro, not our church, but another church in Jonesboro, they used to have to do fundraisers to pay the stinking light bill. My God. Because of pool pigs out there. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. I'm here to tell you, Paul didn't mix words, and Peter never opened his mouth. That's right, yeah. Outside of it's me, boy. I'm going to prove it to you in just a minute. Listen. So, because Peter, Peter now, Peter. Is, a, is, a, is fearful of the, of, of the circumcision church. Peter lost his courage, friend. What happened? Peter was an impulsive man. We track, track his life. He's an impulsive man. One minute, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood is not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven, and upon this rock I shall build my church. And in eight, three sentences later, Jesus looks and says, get thee behind me, devil. You're thinking like an ordinary man. He's impulsive. But he's full of the Spirit of God. He's, can, I, can I tell you? He's full of the Spirit of God, but he lost his courage. He could, he could show amazing faith and courage one minute and fade completely out the next. 
I said he could shout in the church and almost curse on the job. My God. My God. He could look straight in the pastor's eyes and say, oh, I love everybody, and go out that door and talk him down lower than a dog. My God. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm talking about fear, governed by fear. Fear will do the fruit. We'll produce this three out of three times. Because you get, you, cause you, you see, with fear, you got to understand there's always a factor. There's always some strong spirit looking over this thing and trying to call the shots here. Come on now. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We, I'm not talking about the boogeyman at the door. A strange knock at the night. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about standing up, fearful to stand up and say what Jesus said. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's happening in the church. Between the virus and this and that, I stood up and I looked. I, I looked at that beautiful crowd yesterday, and I said, "I'm going to say something. I mean it from my heart. Uh, I know. I, I know there's a coronavirus, but let it be known that there's still a stinking uh, devil called cancer that will eat a 250 pound man down to nothing more than a bone. Huh? I said there's still a leukemia out there. There's still a blood disease." Huh? Well, come on, somebody. Uh, and listen, I told somebody a while ago, uh, the government's all about caring for the welfare of the country, pushing the vaccination, going to find you, going to cause your job. I said the day they really get concerned about the life of Americans, they'll quit murdering millions of little babies. Yeah. Right. Come on. Come on. And I say about this, they don't care if you live or die. In fact, if I was going to think, it's probably they kind of wish you'd go ahead and croak before you guys start paying you some Social Security. Come on, brother. Come on. But that's another message another time. But I'm talking about fear. Are you still there? Yeah. Come on. Has any of y'all ever run into an opposition called fear? Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. <laughs> I can't get every day of my life. Because I'm around, I, I got myself around, I'm, a, I'm around people. I, I minister to people everywhere, hospitals and, 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 and all these places. And a question's asked. There's a, I went and visited a man that had a stroke. And, and we're talking in, 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 a, in a split room. And the next uh, the next curtain right there, but he's on. I spoke to him, hey, Pastor, how you doing? Doing good. I, I didn't go, when, when they started asking me about the Lord and what God's doing. I didn't go first and confer with the pastor right there. Now what, now, what kind of religion are you where I'm going to offend you? No, sir, read. Come on. No, sir, read. We tell the gospel. You don't yeah. tell them your take of the gospel. You show them the gospel. Are you there? And that's the fear I'm, I'm talking. I'm not talking about worried, listen, worried a little about this corona and about cancer and all that. Uh, we, that is human emotions, guys. Uh, yeah. But what I'm talking about this morning is the spirit of fear. Uh, Brother Greg, that thing looms over us like an ugly storm cloud sometimes. Uh, oh, it'll try to pin your back against the wall. It'll strip you from every ounce of energy and, and hope and courage that you have. Uh, yeah. But that's the time to push back. That's the time to stand up. That's the time to present to that fear. God is on my side. Yeah, come on. So look, let me wind this down now. I said he was in and out. He, he, he would be so strong, but he'd fade out. He boasted that he would never, that he would willingly die for Jesus and deny him three times. Peter, it was Peter's fear that led to Peter's fall. Remember that? It was Peter that was the one going to defend the Lord. It was Peter doing this, Peter doing that. But it was Peter's fear that led to Peter's fall. Now there are two eras in Peter's fall. First, it made him a hypocrite. Oh my. The Apostle Paul's talking to the head of the church here. At that time, Peter become an apostle, the head of the, uh, 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 the church. In fact, the Catholic believed that Peter was actually the first pope in the, in, through the, uh, the Catholic faith. And, uh, it's, it's not so, but, but that's what they, they, they say. But Peter was a very, very, very big figurehead of, of the first church. Okay? Yeah. Now, now, I guess that's why they got Peter standing guard over the pearly gates. I don't, I don't know about that. You know, you've heard that 
the jokes and, and Peter was at the gate and and, and, a, and, a, and a preacher and a rabbi and a, you know and we will leave all that alone too but but I don't know how they got Peter guarding the pearly gates because can I tell you there's something way stronger than Peter guarding the blood it's the blood of Jesus yes, sir. Come on. and you ain't going in unless you're washed in the blood yeah. of Jesus Come on. you talk in tongues all day long I've heard them and again I've heard them all there, blah, 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 and they go right up there and then talk somebody down lower the dog. There ain't no Holy Ghost. In fact, the old game show they used to play a long time ago where they had people hid in the dark behind the desk and they'd ask a question huh? and they would all give an answer and then they would say something, well, we're the real truth. They're the one that's right. I was pleased. I preached a message one time, will the real Holy Ghost please stand up? Huh? Because I want to tell you, I'm not saved huh? because I was either baptized in Jesus' name or the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on. I'm not, I'm, come on. I'm not justified because somebody uh, put me in some water and stood me up. I'm justified and you're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, Paul said. You are in fear with the precious promise of, of the Godhead bodily, which is the, the, the person of Jesus in spirit form, which is the Holy Ghost of God. Yes, sir. Let's get our facts straight here. Come on. Yes. <laughs> How you baptize, Pastor? The name of the Father, and the name of the Son, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come on, and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the mission of sins. And I had to want to burn the house down because I didn't say Jesus' name. And the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Man's getting tight. Come on. <laughs> And they put all the emphasis, though, the, those, those people in the Church of Christ puts all the emphasis on water. But they all came through the baptism when they come out of Egypt. Did they not? Me and point five hundred thousand were all baptized. That's what Paul said in, in the Red Sea. But yet, every generation from a certain age down died. Outside of the will and plan of God. Come on. I feel like I'll get a letter or a phone call, but I will from either one. I'd rather do a face to face though with you. And we will we'll, we'll get it on this. But listen, quit putting your salvation in some formula. Put it in Christ. Yeah. Put it in Christ. Are you still out there? Yeah. Well, I feel like now I'm gonna try to pull some teeth without an anesthesia. <laughs> I mean, why y'all not got all sour over just that right there? You know why? Because you're unsettled in yourself. No. No. You're unsettled in yourself because you've been taught and taught and taught and heart and, 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 and dog. But I'm not cut not one broken spot off that hair. That's what they'll tell you. So you know what the young ladies used to do? They used to twist it till it broke. <laughs> That's bondage, friend. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Let me tell you, when I got born again and filled the Holy Ghost, the few times I put on some of that vulgar stuff I used to wear, when I put it on, I knew immediately, uh-uh. Right. Uh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't sell it in the garage sale either. Come on. Some of them go, oh, are we okay here? Come on. I feel like a, I, I, my God, I feel like a Hammond B3 organ in a Church of Christ service here, you know. <laughs> Glory to God. But, but I'm here to tell you, y'all, oh, friend, listen now. Listen, fear by whose company you keep can motivate you to lean this away or lean that away. Right. You better learn to lean Jesus way. Right. Because yes. everything is in Jesus. Yes. Yes. Oh, Glory to God. So if you want to persecute me because I put Jesus' name last instead of first, come on. Can I tell you, unless your heart's been changed, you're just going to come up wet. <laughs> You, you get baptized a hundred thousand times in life and still die and that hellfire is going to dry your, your water real quick, somebody. But if you would just get plugged in uh, to the saving grace and the knowledge uh, of who Christ really is. Uh, because Paul said, you are complete in him. Yeah. Glory to God. Woo, man. Listen now. I done said what three times I'm 
trying to get through here. Y'all help me a little bit quick. I'm going to throw a brick at me or something. Come on now. Look, I said the two errors that Peter made, he was a hypocrite. At times, the word incriminates you and I as a hypocrite. I read the Bible sometimes and said, oh, dear God, I'm a hypocrite. Come on. Which Peter pretended that his actions and, and actions were motivated by faithfulness when they were really motivated by fear. The second era is that Peter led others astray with him. Right? Even Barnabas, this is Barnabas, was involved. Would Barnabas would have stayed if Peter would have stayed? Possibly. We would think he would have. Since he looked to Peter as the, as the leader there of that group. But because Peter bailed. Right. Because Peter feared and ran. Huh? So now Barnabas is involved. So, so the heir of Peter led others. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful who you follow. Huh? Or we will be held accountable when we stand before God of leading others astray. So think about this now. Barnabas had been one of the spiritual leaders in the church of Antioch. So his disobedience would have a tremendous influence on the others in the fellowship. This act of Peter was more than switching tables in a lunchroom, friend. This act split. Listen. This act spit in the very face of the gospel and had the possibility of splitting that fellowship. Come on now. I'm going to tell you of how I said it could have split, but we're going to see it didn't split. Why? Remember, it, it went against it went against the unity of the church in verse 12. It went against justification by faith in verse 16. It went against freedom of religious bondage by verse 19. It went against the, it went against the grace of God in verse 21. You can look all that up. But that one act, it went against all this, the unity of the church. Because let me tell you, friend, when somebody surplants poison in your ears, then you're, then you're hard-pressed not to believe what you're hearing. That's right. I've had a person come to me before in the past and say, this is what's going on, this is what you need to do. I said, well, I will when God says. Right. Come on. And I thank God I didn't just jump up in an impulse or influence and do something. Come on. Yeah. Right. And this happens in every church. The poor Baptist pastor dedicated his life to God and, and, and served to that church, and they don't like what he preached. They just run him right out of Come on, somebody. That's called denominationalism. That calls, that's called formulism. That means they're giving too much power to a group, one certain group of people in a church. Come on. Yeah, come on. I, 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 I am the spokesperson of Faith Tabernacle, as God is my spokesperson, my, my speaker. Okay, my voice, you know, my voice is used because of what God's translating through to me and through me. Okay, and we don't need a hundred interpreters out there to the public. Amen. Are you out there? Yeah. Yeah. Brother Daniel Swinney used to say this: "Don't get afraid, because when they quit shouting, it means they're listening now. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> and I'm, this is not hard. This is truth, friend. This is truth. There is a fear that wants to destroy you." Man, I want to tell you what fear will do. It'll cause, it'll cause division between the husband and wife. It'll cause division between the, the, the sisters or the, or the children. It'll cause division between the newlyweds. Come on, somebody. You know, it, 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 it'll cause division. Because if the devil can cause division at home, eventually it causes division in the church. Yeah. Don't say it, don't. Here's an instance right here. In, I guess it was this building where somebody... Tried to hang the pastor and make him decide. And if he didn't go their way, they're going to pick their ball up and run off. And guess what? I think the pastor healed his brain. Yes. Yes, sir. Come on. Oh, I lost a lot of people. But you know what? If that's all it took. It was just a matter of time that people were walking anyway. Yes. Yes, sir. This is a church. This ain't an egg farm. We don't tiptoe to make sure we didn't step and break something. No, sir. This is the body of Christ. You better grow up and learn warfare. Because I'm going to tell you, there's a devil that hates your guts because of the Lord Jesus Christ that lives in you, friend. He hates us. Uh, but don't, don't power to that. Don't let fear govern you. Put your foot on the head of fear 
and say it is written. All right, last time I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to wrap this up. Come on, brother. Oh, listen, I, I got to tell you this part, though. Listen, what, what, what's as important as what Paul said, now watch this, listen to this one. What, what's as important as what Paul said is the untold response of Peter. How did Peter respond? Because I'm going to tell you, if we're not careful when we get called on a carpet, we don't like that. Now, it's one thing to be called in a private room somewhere and say, listen, you know. But can you imagine that old, that old place was full of people? Everybody in there probably knew who Peter was. He's talking, witnessing these shit, and all of a sudden he does that, and all of a sudden Paul walks up there and gets, I can almost see, I, I, don't, I don't know, Elder, and God don't measure us by the, our statue, but I just think of Peter just a big man. Huh? It, it, do y'all kind of get there? And listen, Peter might not be that high. We yeah. <laughs> say, oh, well, you Peter, okay? Listen, <laughs> listen. But I just always felt he was just a big old gruff man, you know? Yeah. But the Apostle Paul, I think he was a little more frail. Older man, more frail. But I guarantee you, them old fingers, when he stuck them in Peter's face, looked like a 45 Magnum, son. He said, Peter, what have you done? So, how would we take it? I know how we take it. He had no right to embarrass me in front of everybody. I'm leaving. I had, I had a man, I preached, I preached one message that just got under his skin. I named it Scraps Fit for a King. <laughs> we preached, man, I want to take the Holy Ghost out there. They was hanging off the, the lights in there, man. And he got through. We got through that service. He, he walked straight up to me and he looked at me and he gritted his teeth. And, mm, he said, me or my money will never step foot back in here. I wanted to say, well, you're going to leave your, your sweet wife. Says she's a sweet mother of the family anyway, but I didn't. <laughs> she was a singer on the platform. She was such a godly woman. He jerked her out of that church and they lay off glory to God. Man, that devil said he was one of the biggest tithe pairs of the church. And I said, well, so what? So what I'm worried about is soul, not his money. Come yeah, on. Come and on. it wasn't long ago, a week or two, two families walked in. And they just got, they just become a part of the body of Christ, uh, uh, paying their tithes. Man, they just fell in, in just beautiful people. And God told me something. He said, you see, don't, don't ever worry. He said, don't worry about anything. Just worry about just preaching and loving people. Yes, and that's what I've done. Glory to God. Yeah. Hey, just we're gonna love we're gonna love people. Amen. But sometimes we've got to get up close and personal. Yeah. Because we because if not, if we're not careful, we'll get motivated by fear. All right. Remember now, I, I'm almost through and we're not having service here tonight. But listen, I, I said, listen, look at Peter's response. No, no mention of a fallout or a church split. I said, no mention of a fallout. I don't see where Peter got mad and said, that's it. I'm not, listen, I'm not ever going to be in your church anymore, and I'm going to go tell the whole community what a sorry place it is anyway. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. My new ones be start getting fabricated next week. <laughs> that's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 listen. I believe he responded the same way as when the crowing of the rooster sounded in his ears. Remember that when he denied the Lord three times until he heard that rooster crow. Oh, dear God, his heart broke. Because Peter loved Jesus. He, did, he, he wasn't trying to portray something against the word of God. He just, But he just acted against the word of God. We don't do. Some of these things we get caught up in. Sometimes we get caught up in stuff. Because we, we hear one side of something, or, and then we're like, oh. Some things that you, it would be hard-pressed to believe that could actually go on, but yet if not careful, we'll get caught up. Huh? So listen. His response was probably the same way when the crowing of the rooster sounded in his ears and the words of Jesus pounded in his heart. Because Peter knew the old proverb of 15 and 5 that said, A fool despiseth his father's instruction, yes. but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Yes, right. We all need reproof. 
I read that Bible. I don't read that Bible right there just to pick out all the promises and all the good feelings. I, I see it all. And there's a lot of times, y'all, I feel, I feel my God. Oh, it cut me all the way to my soul. Have you ever been there? I said it cut you all the way to the good, the good, sweet, convicting spirit of the Lord. Listen, huh? and listen. So after that happened, you know, eventually Peter's going to write his own epistle here. And this is what he writes now. This is what he writes in 2 Peter chapter 3, 14 and 15. He says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. Without spot and blameless. You know why it was easy for him to write that? Because he had been found. He had no peace because he was governed by fear. And he had a spot now and he was blameless. So yes, some of our best messages comes from the from the other side of something God just brought us through. Come on. Or something that the God that had to deal with us. Amen. Uh, the way we instruct our children in most in most times if not careful is don't uh, don't you do what I say, not as I do. Uh, but that's nothing but hypocrisy. If you want your children to grow, give them some uh, an example to look at uh, and say, well. Well, I might, I might go off the deep end, but it ain't because mom and daddy did. Huh? Yes. Listen now. Verse 15, he says this. After the peace, him in peace without spotted blameless, he said, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even our beloved brother Paul, also according, watch this. To the wisdom given unto him that written unto you. Stand. And let me say this. You don't find no hard feelings in, in Peter's writings. Come on, Brother John, get ready. You don't find no, you don't find not one little inkling of thought that Peter's begrudging. No, Peter was guilty. And Peter was a saved man. Full of the Spirit of the Lord. So it wasn't but one thing to do apologize. Make it right with them Gentile friends. Use, yes, sir, yes, sir. Use your mistake to bring the welfare of the gospel to somebody. Yes, yes sir. Come on. Use your shortcomings. Not as, not, as, not as a, in a failing spirit, but because you fail to succeed in your perfection in your walk with God, then God can turn that around and you can actually use that to show somebody they don't have to make the same mistake you did. Right? Glory to God. Man. Tell me fear ain't real. Tell me fear ain't real. It's so real. It's so real that Paul would even tell that young preacher, and again, I say, God didn't give you that spirit of fear. Listen, you know, if we can, if we can grow, if we can grow in heart, then we can grow in mental capacity to demonstrate a, a, a gospel of a resurrected Savior. We're not careful. We do nothing more than promote the false doctrinal error that Jesus is still dead. Huh? You know how this world's going to know if Jesus is alive or not? Because they're going to have to see it and hear it in you. And at times, if we're not careful, we tell them what they want to hear more than what the Bible says. They, without any arrogance... Without any, without any content, any any attitude that well, I've arrived, so I've got the right to say this to somebody. You do it out of the welfare, the care for their soul. Yes. But if you got somebody just filling your ear or something, especially when it pertains to this church, you need to send them to me. I'll clear it up. I won't defend myself if I've been if I was if I was this or that that I've been accused of. If you was this or that you accused. People owes enough to you to go to. If, it, if, 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 if I said something about Elder, God knows I'd have it, but, but good things. But if I if I railed against her or said something to you and whispering or maybe backbiting and stuff or you know, 
God hates that. But if I would have had a problem, the Bible tells us we'd go, I'd go to her and I, I, we'd get it right. Come on, we get it. I could go to her without worrying about it. She's going to kick me in the shin and all that. Come on, we get it right. You know why? Because we're Jesus people. Yeah. Yes, if everybody, if everybody could just fall in love with just Jesus, do you understand what I'm trying to say today? Fear governs you and takes you down a road you don't want to go on. Sometimes we even fear the truth. Doctor come out and told and told that loving wife that her husband that went in there for that small procedure is eat up with cancer. And he told her right diagnosis by their medical laws and the x-rays and all that, he's eat up with cancer. She didn't get charismatic and say, oh, I ain't accepting, I ain't believe, I ain't receiving that. No, she said, thank you, doctor. Now we will know how to pray. And I went up there on my way back from Ruston, Louisiana the other day, and I wheeled into, to, <laughs> my God, I wheeled into their house. And he's sitting there, man, and we talking. He's been cancer-free not only one time, but two times since that. She said, thank you, doctor. That's a fair evaluation. But, but just because it's, it looks like that on the x-ray screen, huh, we're going to stand up and proclaim God's health and healing. Come on. And if God delivers me from this, God, it's God and it ain't man. Yes, man. It's God. It ain't man. God's got the final say. Brother Steve McQuiston, I got the text a while ago. He passed away at 958, but he's been 10 days without any kind of fluid in his body. He's been drawn up for years. He don't weigh a, a, a feather in the wind. But for 10 days now, he's had not one bit of moisture, not with a syringe. But yet, he's still producing liquid out of his body. Man, Brother Thomas was just sharing last night, was talking, and I said, you know what? I believe he was the greatest, you, some of you have already heard me say this, one of the greatest Holy Ghost preachers. Yes. He was a fisherman in Generette, Louisiana. Man, I'm going to tell you, if you've, ever, if you've ever seen a true evangelist, he pastored for years, but he had that spirit of Bible evangelism of the evangelism promoting Christ and the Holy Ghost. And man, he was a big, but I don't take you to paint a word picture. And I said, Brother Thomas, you know what I just believe? I just believe because he ain't had no liquid in him for a long time. And that thing's taking it out of him, you know. But oh, but he was a, he preached about the Holy Ghost and lived the Holy Ghost. And he told me when I first moved to Jonesboro, Louisiana, he said, you come in here and you paint them walls with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That Holy Ghost is a type of the river. <laughs> so you know what? That river was still flowing through him. Glory to God. Now he's not curled up and suffering anymore. He's going to see the one that he's, pre he's preached for years and years. You'll see him as he is now. Dear God in heaven, I want to tell you, you be careful. You lose fear. Get your, your mind so messed up and your, 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 your vision shifted that you can't even see the glories of what the Word of God says heaven. Fear. Fear no one or nothing but God himself. And then the fear that I'm talking about God is a reverent fear. It's a holy fear. It ain't a, it ain't a shudder fear. Oh, you, you get in his presence, he'll drive you to the ground and you'll worship him. Huh? But oh my God, if you just learn to fear God. Yes, sir. That's a form of loving God. So we want to pray right now. Maybe there's some events in your life that's happening. Maybe there's some decisions. Maybe there's some people. Whatever it might be. But friend, listen. Handle it by the word of God. Handle it in walking in the spirit of the Lord. And I tell you, the Lord will be pleased with that every time, every time. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor.